I want to just uh, quote a little bit from the book. It's about productivity of labor. That's what this is about, the productivity of labor, which capitalism must continually intensify. Each capitalist fights the other capitalists by having more technology because that allows their workers to produce more and more in less time and gives them an advantage to try to get more market share. This goes on. Capitalism functions only within the framework of competition. And there's no other framework that they can't stop. So what has happened in the last 20 years is that uh, there's been a change in the business cycle under capitalism. And this is the most extreme expression of it in this previous crisis. What has the change been? The change has been what they call the jobless recovery. And a jobless recovery is a recovery of the capitalist economy, business activity, in which the workers don't recover. They don't get reabsorbed into the system. It started in 1991. It got worse in 2001 and 2. And now this is the worst one of all. Each one has become progressively more severe. The lag time, more workers have been laid off in this recession than in the last four put together. In the last four put together. And this recession was one of the longest that, they've, that US capitalism has experienced since World War II. And what's behind it? <coughs> The bosses themselves are trying to figure it out. After the jobless recovery of 2004, they, they tried to, the, the Federal Reserve Board tried to investigate this. And it was Ben Bernanke himself who made an investigation before he was the president. And he concluded that the big problem was the productivity of labor. And also the Federal Reserve Board studied the layoffs in all the recessions prior to 1991. And they showed that all those layoffs were almost all temporary. And that all the layoffs since 1991 have been almost all permanent. In other words, the jobs are gone. Why are the jobs gone? because of the productivity of labor. I will just read one thing from, from Business Week in April 2006. It's called The Case of the Missing Jobs. This is before the crisis. Since 2001, with the aid of computers, telecommunications advances, and ever more efficient plant operations, US manufacturing productivity, or the amount of goods and services a, workers, a worker produces in an hour, has soared a dizzying 24%. In short, we're making more stuff with fewer people. <coughs> what you mean we? They don't make nothing. The workers make it. That's what, but they're saying the working class is becoming more and more productive. And that's, the, that's why there are missing jobs. That's why jobs are missing. And let's discuss for a minute, let's be concrete, let's show specifically how this works for the workers. Ann Taylor, which is a, a retail store, very had 959 stores when I wrote this book. Every day, you come in, you open up the cash register, and you put a code number into it, and the program puts in average sales per hour, units sold, dollars per transaction, and schedules the systems of the workers to select workers so that there's more workers at the busiest hours, fewer workers at the low hours, and those who make the best sales, they get the good shift, and those who make the bad, the, the lesser sales, they get lower shifts, three hours, two hours, whatever. So the idea is over these 959 stores to figure out 
exactly how to get the absolute maximum out of every single worker without a minute wasted. They studied the different tasks. Three seconds to greet a shopper, two minutes to help someone try on clothing, 32 seconds to fold a sweater, five minutes to clinch the sale. Now this has been spread all over the retail industry. It's not just Ann Taylor. Walmart has put in their own system, The Gap, Williams-Sonoma, and so on. I just want to show you the idea of what this is all about. Getting seconds and minutes from every worker. And she's, this has only 959 stores. Think of your General Electric and you have a global empire. There are many other examples in the book about robots that, that learn things as they go along and make everybody else jump to the, to, to, uh, to, uh, to meet the, the requirements of the robot. The robot brings stuff and hey, you gotta take it and, 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 you, and deal with it. But in your particular job, whatever it may be. What has been the result of all of this? And another. In February 2001, in an article called The Great Jobs Recession, a man named Zuckerman, who's one of the richest men in the country, he, he runs U.S. News and World Report. He has $147 billion. Uh, no, no, he, I'm sorry. He's the 147th richest man in the world. I don't know exactly how much he's got. But he is a, he's thinking about this. He's a big capitalist. And he said that there were an astonishing 10 million fewer full-time jobs in the economy now than in the year before this crisis started. And he, he said that there are more jobs were lost in the recession of 2009 than in the previous four recessions put together. And someone else has discovered that there are 11 million fewer job openings now than there were in 2003. So all these unemployed workers, and the population has grown by millions, by probably maybe 30 million. Where are these workers going to enter the workforce? How are they going to get in? And this is what tells you about youth unemployment, by the way. The youth have like 20, 30, 40 percent unemployment, especially black and Latino <coughs> youth. Who, who, who are being shut out of the job market permanently. And that's the surest sign of a capitalist system that's in complete decay, when, the, when an entire generation of youth is shut out of the job market. What does that say about the future of the system? 